I studied and prepared for 10 weeks leading up to the CFP board exam. And I wanna share my insight and some information beyond the obvious that will hopefully help you successfully prepare and study and also get that preliminary pass on exam day. It's all so fresh in my mind. It was just a month ago when I took the exam. I passed on my first go around. So fulfilling. I left that Prometric test center singing and dancing and just loving life because all of that hard work paid off. And this has been a goal of mine for a long time. I'm 32 years old. I started my own RIA a year ago. This was something that was really important to me. So I signed up for it and starting January 1st all the way up till exam day, which was March 17th, it was a marathon. Every day had to be full of accountability. And I wanna share my insight and information beyond the obvious so that you too can have a very successful go around when you sit and hopefully pass your CFP board exam. So I wanna show you just daily accountability. I would write down the hours each day and then also just add up the weekly uh, amount. I ended up studying for over 300 hours uh, for 10 weeks. I did not take a day off. I really slowed down a few days before exam day because I want you to think of it like shoot around before tip off. You've put in the work beforehand. You do not need to have a full all out scrimmage before the game. You really need to stretch, shoot around, warm up, because you put in the work prior to that and you wanna save your, your energy for game day. It is a six hour exam with a little break in the middle, but it's a lot of time, it's a lot of questions, it's a lot of topics. This process is equally about energy management as it is time management. So. Hang out with me for a few more minutes here while I go over some really important tips. And I did print out Kaplan's module as I was going through uh, each week. There's a 10 week schedule. I stuck to it, 10 weeks, every single day. It was a grind. I chose Kaplan, obviously, uh, but there's a lot of great resources out there. Brett Dangle has a lot of great reviews. And it seemed to me, in this wave of March 2020 uh, exams, it seemed a lot of people used Brett Danko and there was a lot of success with those people. So, uh, as I showed you, daily accountability, I logged it about 310, 315 hours. That's a real grind and that's in addition to whatever else you got going on in the real world, work, business, family, all the above. That's why energy management is just as important. To hit on what I mean specifically when I say energy management, AM over PM. Your mental capacity in the morning is far greater than it is in the afternoon or at night. The everyone's situation is different. Everyone's work and life environment may look very different. So you need to determine where you're going to be most efficient. The morning hours can be really beneficial to absorb the information as best we can. When we are fresh, you need to get enough sleep, you need to eat well. Managing your time and your energy is so important because this is a 10 week process at least. That's a scary feeling and, and there's we can be motivated by fear and, and that definitely was a part of motivation for me was you wanna get this done, check it off your to-do list and rock those CFP marks. So I really want you to take this very seriously because it is a difficult exam. I have a very strong background in insurance, that's the business I grew up in, and then I worked for an RIA. So I had about 10 years of experience before sitting for this exam. At least 250 hours, at least 10 weeks is what I personally think that anyone out there needs to allocate to this exam in order to pass. With that being said, and going off of just energy management, I have habits. Gym, do not disturb my business and social. I changed up going to the gym from the morning to the nighttime. And I did that because I feel as though you can be mindless at the gym at night where in the morning, I'd rather have those hours where I was going to the gym be allocated to absorbing and being fresh to absorb 
all of this information. So I, I looked at those morning hours as premium hours to really take advantage of absorbing the material on a different level and leaving the workouts to my exhausted mind at night. And so do not disturb is a button we all have on our phone and it became my best friend. I really mean that. It was probably on for six hours a day. I think that if you can put your phone on do not disturb, it's gonna serve you really well throughout this process. Your energy can shift, your attention can shift very quickly and having that on there to avoid uh, small talk or little issues, you know, I own an RIA, so little emails that I'd get that would really shift my attention and energy to a place that wasn't very productive in that moment, took away from valuable exam time and exam energy. My business, as I mentioned, I have an RIA, so I shifted from the morning to the afternoon most of my business activities. And then social, there's two sides of that coin. There's social media, and then there's your social life. There wasn't much of either one of those. You know, I do my stuff for business on social media, so I post here and there, but nothing like I did in 2019. Going out on the weekend was going to dinner. That was pretty much it for 10 weeks. At the end of the day, this is a, a, a very difficult exam, so you need to take it very seriously if you're serious about becoming a CFP, which obviously has become the gold standard in financial planning. There's a reason not everyone has their CFP marks, and there's a reason not everyone will pass the CFP if they take it. Just be mindful of that, and, and, and making these alterations to your schedule, changing up some habits. Uh, you can use that same energy in that mode you were in for studying for this exam and put it and pour it into something else that can be extremely productive. Definitely take a real close look at your schedule and see what might best fit your needs and your learning style as well. Building up your stamina. This one is huge. I use the analogy of this is a marathon. If you're training for a marathon and you're not an avid runner, you're not going to go and run 10 miles day one. You need to build up your stamina. This is a six hour exam. I started out doing a few hours a day for a week, then four hours a day, then five for a few weeks. And then that those last few weeks, I, I did anywhere between five and seven hours a day. I never once went over seven hours a day. I did hear of people talking about studying for 10 hours a day or even 11 or 12, I wouldn't suggest it, especially leading up to exam day. Trust the work that you've put in and the foundation that you've built because keep in mind, this is a multiple choice exam. And while it's extremely difficult, if you put in the work, you're gonna be able to eliminate one or two of those answers pretty easily just from the foundational knowledge that you've built, trusting the process, and, and just the time you've put in will, will get you to the finish line if you take this seriously. So building up your stamina is crucial. And, I, and, and then the mock exams, I would schedule in closer to exam day. So I did Kaplan's mock exam one month before, and then I did the CFP board exams practice exam a week and a half before. That worked well for me because it really built up my confidence going into the exam. I really focused on Kaplan's 10-week module and just stuck to the plan and put in the work. And also took care of myself, you know, getting enough sleep, exercising pretty much every day. I'm someone who has always worked out and I found that it was very extra therapeutic during this 10-week study uh, process. You can really fall in love with the process, especially if you have a goal like passing your CFP and having those marks behind your name because there, there is a, a real pride to that. And there's a real, real knowledge base that you're gonna learn that you don't even realize. Uh, I've learned so much throughout this process that I've applied to even recent conversations and that's why this is the gold standard of any certifications out there uh, in our industry. And so building up your stamina, the mock exams, scheduling those and doing those in the same format, three hours, little break, three hours as the real exam, I think is very helpful. There is something available called the dry run where uh, you can actually go to the uh, Prometric Test Center and check out the facility. Maybe you're taking the exam like I did in a state that isn't where you live or where you're from. 
So I went to their, their exam center a uh, week before, you pay 30 bucks, you can just check out the process, you even go on the computer and do a little tutorial, and they just share the insight of signing in and signing out and, and all that stuff to help lessen the anxiety that is just gonna be natural and we're all gonna have some level of. So I kind of planned it out in my head a little bit the day before. I, I saw the surrounding, I saw the test center, that was very helpful for me. Just these are things that I definitely wasn't aware of and a lot of people might overlook and maybe that's um, preparing to a degree that you might not find necessary, but I think that there's a group of people out there that might want to consider that approach. I'm gonna leave you with three more things here. Of course, drop any comments, questions, if you like the video and subscribe to the channel, that would mean a lot. Maybe share it with someone who is going through the CFP studying process as well, that would be awesome. But I wanna leave you with these three things. To be a CFP, you need to be calm, focused, and positive. CFP, calm, focused, and positive throughout this process because it's a real grind, it's a marathon, and I want to see you walk out of this successful. I know you do too, so just stay calm, stay focused, and stay positive. There's going to be difficult days when you're studying, you're on income you know, tax planning, and it's overwhelming, and you finish the day at your four or five hours, and you feel like you didn't really move forward. Don't worry about it, I had plenty of those days. But just know that it's part of the process. Things will start to click as you move through the weeks and the days. You'll see a lot of overlap in the book. So stay calm, stay focused, stay positive. RTFQ, probably the biggest thing for exam day. Read the full question, you can substitute that letter for whatever word you would like to help you remember that. RTFQ needs to be ingrained in here every single question. Making sure you read that last line. You know, which one is not true or incorrect or false. Understanding what they are asking is everything because there are a lot of distractors, as you would imagine, in the questions and, and, and answer bank that you're gonna have to figure out you know, what are they asking for and so RTFQ is going to be something that you should have in the front of your mind at all times. M&M, mark and move. Mark and move is something I've always done. If I see a question that I know is going to take me a while, I just marked it and I moved on to the next question and then at the end of each session, I personally like going through the flagged questions at the and so marking and moving and then reviewing those flagged questions at the end. There's been nothing like the CFP exam. It is by far the hardest exam I've ever taken in my life. I want you to take it very seriously. I want you to take mental and physical health very seriously in general, but especially during this process. And if you have any questions again, drop them in the comments, subscribe to the channel. I wish you the best of luck. Stay calm, stay focused, and stay positive, you got this.